Hi everyone, I'm Kieran Clare, journalist with API Magazine, and today we're talking with Zaki Amir, who's a property mentor. Now he helped Todd Taylor set up his extraordinary portfolio, and he's come to give us some of the benefit of his wisdom today. So thanks for joining us, Zaki, really appreciate it. Thanks, Kieran, good to speak to you. So Zaki, Todd came fairly late to the game as an investor. What are some of the different um, factors that an older investor needs to, to pay attention to as opposed to someone who's starting out a fair bit younger? Yeah, that's a good question, Kieran. I guess you, you could tell from my age, I, I'm probably more from the younger younger generation. As so, so it was interesting, uh, Todd coming along at his age bracket, and also the responsibility that I guess goes behind about uh, taking investment risks and buying property and uh, having a high goal. Um, Todd's lines were virtually, you bought a property every few months, so I want to buy a property every few months. <laughs> Which is good as, a, as having a goal, but I didn't want to get too carried away um, in buying too many too quickly, um, simply because uh, just to make sure you get used to it, because this is the first time Todd was doing this exercise, uh, and the other part is managing risk. Now, the most important part, I guess, was his age and then his date of potential, say, retirement from full-time workforce. So... We had to backtrack it to see, okay, if we started today, say, in a similar manner, if someone was in their late 20s or 30s, uh, where, would we, where would we finish up? So I give property investing a 10-year period, a 10-year buy and hold strategy. And even though he was uh, starting at his age, I was, I was fine um, in conjunction working with him in following a very similar strategy, but I didn't want to be too, too aggressive in the approach. So even for right now, I've actually uh, guided Todd to say, look, you've bought these properties. Now he actually owns six in total under his name. And why don't we sit on it for a few months so that you get used to it? Um, and then we can uh, keep going. I mean, they're all self-sustaining in terms of cash flow, uh, but it's just now more getting used to the investment. Right. And, you know, one of the keys is finding good locations for investment. How do you personally go about finding a good location and then finding the really good properties within that location for an investor? Yeah, it's definitely location first, then property, because you know you definitely can get, find good properties in bad locations. So it's definitely location first. Um, to me, it's the uh, same way I invested, um, is to look for areas that have sustainable growth. So my view on investing, uh, and that's my personal view, is not to go too much on the high risk returns, uh, I tend to avoid, I guess, hot spotting areas or predicting. Um, it's more for areas that have established growth and increasing infrastructure because of housing affordability, and that's where the market is moving. And the reason I do that is because I, I have passed data to, I guess, say, well, if growth was this percentage for the last 10 years, we could then fairly make a better prediction as opposed to going to a brand new area and trying to predict what's going to happen in the in the market over there. And how about finding those specific properties? I mean, is it just a case of, of working your way through the agents or? Um, relationships are definitely where it's at. Um, as myself, as a mentor with my own portfolio, building relationships and now building uh, portfolios for, for clients who, who get mentored uh, through me and us is, uh, is is the commitment. I mean, I'm representing the buyer and then the, I guess the agent is representing the seller and they know that I'm responsible for the buyer, same way they're responsible for the seller. So we meet um, each other halfway. Um, time and time, I guess, I guess question as to why would a vendor reduce the price to you uh, when, they, when it's the agent's job to make sure they get the maximum price. But it happens very often in the market, the, the novice or average uh, investor or purchaser might simply go on a deal at a higher price and then last day of cooling off, pull out of the deal. And then the agent is back to where they are and then the vendor has to start the marketing process all over again. So a majority of agents, you know, with good relationships uh, like to work with uh, people like us. Terrific. Now, Sydney's been running pretty hot as a market um, of late. Are there still cash flow opportunities available uh, down Sydney way? Yeah, definitely. I think for, say, the last 12 months, uh, the areas I do target have seen uh, very good growth. Some areas nearly 16% growth, which makes all my clients from the previous years very happy with what I've done, uh, simply because of the growth more than myself. 
but uh, are the areas still still good? They're definitely good areas. I wouldn't say they've peaked uh, uh, and now they're going to fall because that's just a very hard prediction. But as you know, the interest rates at this moment are still kept where it is. And the reason the yields have started to drop um, is because prices have gone up. But that's not to say that once the interest rates do go up, landlords will get into gear and start increasing rents uh, to maintain the shortfall in cash and yields could uh, possibly you know, go up again. So there's def definitely bargains still to be found uh, with the right properties, right agents in the areas. Oh, terrific. Now look, Todd um, has got a couple of deceased estates in his portfolio. How do people go about locating those possibly distressed vendor situations? Um, yeah, I think one or two of his properties uh, never went to market or never hit market. Uh, some of these deals, once again, uh, comes down to relationships. Um, there were, and, and the, act, the ability to act quick. So for example, Todd being represented by myself, uh, where we're aware of his financial situation, making sure that his approvals are in place. He was, uh, he was, it was a 24 hour decision uh, to make that, um, to make that call on purchasing that property. And using all of us working together, we can get the deal across the line as opposed to, you know, doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. And look, finally, Zaki, you know, one great, what do you think is one great tip for the first time investor just starting out? Well, I, I always say property investing is long term. This is not a get rich scream. This is not, I wouldn't say a, something to replace your income immediately. I give it a 10 year plan. It is slower, but it's uh, stable and sustainable, and which is what, uh, what I like to appreciate about it. So yeah, stick in. Terrific. Zaki, always um, great to hear um, some words of wisdom from someone who's, who's in the field and really getting in there and, and doing the job. So thanks very much for your time today. Thank you, Karen.